foolish child, you dare interfere. Among the vibrant stores overflowing with colorful fabrics, glistening beads and sweet smelling spices sat Mama Abeni, the weaver. Her fame as the fastest and most skilled breeder in the land was unmatched. Women young and old clamored for her touch, eager to adorn their heads with intricate beads that held the secrets of the wind and whispered stories of faraway lands. Among the hopeful faces was Amara, a young girl with eyes as deep as the night sky and a spirit as bright as the midday sun. Unlike others, Amara didn't seek beauty in Mama Abeni's braids. She possessed a gift passed down through generations of women in her family, the ability to sense the energies flowing around her. As Mama Abeni's nimble fingers began weaving Amara's hair, Amara felt a cold shiver run down her spine. The strands held a strange unsettling energy, foreign to the warmth emanating from the other women she braided. There is something wrong, Amara whispered, her voice barely audible above the market cacophony. Mama Ebeni chuckled, the sound like dry leaves rustling in the wind. Wrong, child. These are your most beautiful braids yet. Amara closed her eyes, focusing on the strange energy. It wasn't just cold. It roomed with a malevolent power that twisted and turned like a caged beast. Panic surged through her. This wasn't Mama Ebeni's skill. It was something far darker. As Amara delved deeper, she saw visions. Women with vacant eyes. Their once vibrant spirits drained, their laughter replaced by an empty echo. Each woman had a single ebony comb, the same one Mama Abeni used with meticulous care on Amara's hair. The horror of it all washed over Amara. Mama Ebeni wasn't a weaver, she was a harvester. The beautiful braids were a package, a way to trap women's life force within the ebony combs. Fear threatened to consume her, but Amara, foiled by a sudden surge of determination, pushed forward. She knew she had exposed Mama Abeni to break the curse. But how? Direct confrontation wouldn't work. Mama Abeni was powerful, clothed in an aura of darkness that seemed to repel good intentions. Suddenly, a memory surfaced. Her grandmother's stories of the Egugun the mark spirit who served as guidance of the spirit world. The Egugun were said to be fiercely protective, especially of innocent souls like the women Mama Abeni had trapped. Hope flickered within Amara. She knew what she had to do. Leaving the marketplace with a newfound purpose, Amara hurried to the sacred grove, a place shrouded in ancient trees and whispered secrets. Legend said the Egugun dwelled here. Hidden with the vibrant blooms and rustling leaves, with a deep breath, Amara began a rhythmic chant. An age-old song passed down from her grandmother. It was a plea for help, a summoning call for the guidance. The air grew thick, a heavy stillness descending upon the grove. As the song began its descent, painting the sky with fiery hues, a deep resonating drum beat echoed through the trees. The undergrowth rustled and out stepped a towering figure dropped in a vibrant tapestry. Its face was obscured by a mask adorned with shells and feathers, two glowing embers burning where eyes might be. Amara fell to her knees, her voice trembling. Great Egugun, please forgive my intrusion. I come with a tale of darkness creeping into our village. She poured her heart out revealing Mama Ebeni's treachery and the plight of the stolen souls, the Egugun listening patiently, the glowing embers seeming to burn brighter with each word. When Amara finished, an airy silence engulfed the grove. Then the Egugun spoke, its voice a low rumble that vibrated through the earth. We shall deal with the weaver, it boomed, but you, child, must play your part. Tonight, during the full moon's glow, Mama Ebeni will attempt to complete the ritual. With chaos, distract her. We will be there, 
The plan was risky, but Ama had no choice. As the moon climbed high, beating the marketplace in an ethereal glow, Amara snuck back to Mama Ebeni's stall. Fear gnawed at her, but the thought of the trapped women quelled her courage. Pretending to be another client, she sat in Mama Ebeni's. As Mama Ebeni's fingers began their familiar dance around Amara's head, the room seemed to grow colder. The air crackled with a malevolent energy, and the ebony comb clinking ominously in the moonlight sent shivers down Amara's spine. Taking a deep breath, Amara sprang into action. With a swift movement, she knocked over a tray of colorful beads, sending them scattering across the floor. Oh no, she cried, feigning clumsiness. I'm so sorry. Let me help you clean them up. Mama Ebeni's brows furrowed in annoyance, but she released Amara's head to gather the beads. Seizing the opportunity, Amara discreetly chanted a short prayer her grandmother had taught her. One meant to disrupt dark magic. The room pulsed with unseen energy as Amara's voice, barely a whisper, filled the air. Suddenly, a gust of wind swept through the marketplace, extinguishing latins and sending fabrics swelling. Cries of surprise erupted from the startled customers as the market descended into momentary chaos. In the confusion, Mama Ebeni's hissed, her eyes glowing with an unnatural light. Foolish child, you dare interfere. Amara stood her ground, her voice firm despite the tremor in her heart. Release them, release the souls you've trapped. Mama Ebeni launched for her. Her nails extended like claws, but before she could reach Amara, a deep resonating drum beat echoed through the marketplace. The air shimmered and the Google materialized, its towering form casting a long shadow over the struggling figures. Mama Ebeni recalled, fear flickering in her glowing eyes. The Egugum raised a hand, its voice booming like thunder. Weaver of woe. Your wicked deeds end tonight. With a flick of his wrist, the Egugu unleashed a wave of pure energy. The ebony comb scattered among the fallen beads, shattered into a thousand pieces. A collective gasp arose from the crowd as wispy figures materialized from the broken combs. Women, their eyes vacant and their spirit dimmed, slowly regained their light. Tears streamed down their faces as they looked around the bewilderment. Finally free from the magical imprisonment, Mama Abeni, stripped of her power, collapsed to the ground. Her once vibrant eyes now dull and lifeless. The Egugun turned to Amara, its voice softening. You have done well, child. Your bravery has saved many with a final resonating drop beat. The Egugun vanished as swiftly as it had appeared. The marketplace erupted in cheers and grateful tears. The freed women, reunited with their loved ones, showered Amara with words of thanks and heartfelt embraces. News of Amara's bravery and the Egugun's intervention spread like wildfire throughout Oshobo. Mama Ebeni, stripped of her power and exposed for her malevolent deeds, was banished from the village, never to return. Days turned into weeks, and the once bustling marketplace became a place of healing and celebration. The women who had been trapped shared their stories, each one a testament of Amara's courage and the Egugun's power. Amara, once an ordinary girl, became a symbol of hope and resilience. Her name whispered with reference by mothers and daughters alike. Moons passed and life in Oshobo settled into a peaceful region. Amara continued to hone her gifts, learning to strengthen her connection to the spirit world. However, a knowing unease lingered within her. The memory of Mama Abeni's chilling gaze haunted her dreams. One starless night, while meditating under the ancient baobab tree in the village square, a voice littered into Amara's mind. It was a voice laced with malice, a whisper echoing the chilling echo of Mama Ibeni's tune. You think you've won, child, it hissed. But darkness cannot be truly extinguished. It merely waits, biding its time. Startled, Amara opened her eyes, searching the darkness. Panic gnawed at her. Was it a figment of her imagination or was it Mama Ebeni's cause far from broken? 
she confided in her elders but they dismissed her concerns attributing it to the trauma of her experience yet the voice continued to plague her growing more insistent with each passing day it spoke of forgotten rituals, whispered hints of dark magic potent, enough to empower even the Egugu. Fear and doubt began to cloud Amara's judgment. Had she truly defeated Mama Ebeni? Or was she simply a pawn in a larger unseen game? Determined to unravel the truth, Amara sought answers from the spirit world. Guided by an ancient legend whispered by the wind, she returned to the sacred grove. This time, under the watchful gaze of the giant baobab tree, the legend spoke of a hidden challenge, a test of courage and resilience within the ancient tree's gnarled roots. As Amara pressed her ear against the rock back, the baobab responded, its voice deep and resonating, echo through the grove. Child of light, you seek answers. Face your trials within and the truth shall be revealed. With a deep breath, Amara stepped into the hollow trunk of the baobab. The darkness swallowed her whole, and the air grew thick with an unsettling energy. Visions flickered before her eyes, each one a fragment of Mama Ebeni's past, revealing a darkness far deeper than she ever imagined. She witnessed the weaver's descent into darkness, driven by insatiable taste for power. She saw Mama Ebeni's forge a pact with a malevolent entity, a creature of pure shadow that promised her unbridled power in exchange for the souls of the innocent. As the final vision faded, a chilling realization dawned on Amara. The voice in her head wasn't Mama Ebeni at all. It was the entity she had made a pact with. Using Mama Ebeni as its vessel, this entity trapped within Mama Ebeni's shattered remains was now seeking a new host, a new vessel to unleash its evil upon the world. Amara emerged from the baobab, shaking but resolute. She knew what she had to do. The true battle had just begun. The burden of knowledge weighed heavily on Amara. The entity's power, fueled by Mama Ebeni's remaining essence, was already at work. Whispers of discontent and suspicion began to creep through the once peaceful village. Friends turned against one another, fueled by fabricated grievances and hidden resentment. Amara, guided by the wisdom of the Baobab, knew she couldn't confront the entity alone. She needed to unite the village to awaken the dormant spark of light within each soul. But how could she convince them of a threat invisible to the naked eye, especially when doubt and mistrust had already taken root? She started small, sharing her experiences with trusted friends and family members. Initially, she was met with disbelief, but her unwavering conviction and the raw pain in her voice slowly began to chip away at their skepticism. One by one, individuals began to recall strange occurrences, unsettling whispers within their minds. Fear gave way to a grim determination. The village elders, remembering the legends of the weaver and the egugu, gathered the villagers for a council. Amara, standing before them, spoke of the unseen threat, of the entity's insidious tactics, and the need for unity. Her words resonated with the villagers. They recognized the truth in her plea. The echoes of their own anxieties reflected in her story. Together, they vowed to resist the entity's influence, to nurture the flames of trust and compassion within their hearts. Inspired by the villagers' newfound unity, Amara delved deeper into the Baobab wisdom. The ancient tree revealed a final trial, a ritual that could sever the entity's hold on Mama Ebeni's remains and banish it back to the void from whence it came. The ritual required a potent offering, a symbol of unwavering light to counter the entity's darkness. Amara, alongside the villagers, collected items that held personal significance, token of love, forgiveness and a communal spirit. Together, they weave their items into a tapestry, a physical embodiment of their collective will. Under the watchful gaze of the full moon, Amara adorned in the vibrant tapestry, stood before the shattered remnant of Mama Ebeni. Chants filled the air, a chorus of voices raised in defiance. As the chant reached their crescendo, a blinding light erupted from the tapestry, engulfing Mama Ebeni's remains. 
the entity shrieked. The sound that tore at the very fabric of reality. The villagers held their ground, their voices rising in unwavering determination. The light intensified, burning away the last vestiges of darkness. Slowly, the entity's screams faded, replaced by an airy silence. When the light finally subsided, only a faint whiff of smoke remained, a final testament to the entity's defeat. Mama Ebenis remains lay lifeless, finally free from its grasp. The battle was won, but the scars remained. Mama Ebeni lost to darkness was a stark reminder of the entity's insidious nature. Yet the village emerged stronger. Their bond forged through shared hardship. They had faced a threat invisible to the eyes, but through the unity and unwavering faith, they had extinguished the darkness. Amara continued to hone her gift, becoming a bridge between the spirit world and the village, a guidance against potential threats. The villagers, forever mindful of the entity's attempt, nurtured their spirit of unity, ensuring that the flame of light would never be extinguished. The legend of Amara, the village girl who stood against an unseen enemy, became a cherished tale, a reminder that even the smallest light can overcome the greatest darkness.